All right. Um, so, hi everyone. Um, I'm Brandon Mathis. Uh, I yeah, I do a lot of things here throughout the community. Um, I organize the Ruby Meetup and Ruby Meetup here in the area and have done so for a few years now. Um, <clears throat> I also work at Smashing Boxes. I'm the director of technology there. And today I'm going to be talking to you all about a nice little journey that I went through recently where I was going to just build a small Slack bot using Node.js. And I learned a lot of cool things specifically about working with Slack, with WebSockets, how many WebSockets Node.js can handle at once, and just a lot of cool stuff I'll tell you guys all about it. Again, Smashing Boxes, SmashingBoxes.com. We are a software development agency um, uh, located in downtown Durham. Um, pretty much kind of says it all right there. Um, oh, Greg's back there. He works with me too. What's up, Greg? <laughs> um, also, the Tribal Dev Slack channel. Um, this thing has gotten like really popular recently. We have like a thousand people in the Slack channel, and I don't know yet an effective way to like deliver it to the community. Um, the answer would be a proper URL to actually get to the invitation screen. So working on that, but here's like the really long URL that's at the Heroku app. It's like triangle dead slack inviter.herokuapp.com. Um, or you can go to triangleruby.com, there's a link in the upper right hand corner. Anyone can join. Um, uh, please give our code of conduct to read before you do so, and then just like jump in and start helping each other out with all kinds of cool things, collaborating. And there's a lot of activity in there. Trying Ruby, I organize that. Um, uh, and then also there's the All Things Open conference that I organize alongside with Todd Lewis. He does the brunt of the work. I just kind of help out a bit. But we are slotted to have you know our typical annual conference. It's going to be October 23rd through the 24th. 2017, downtown Raleigh. It's going to be a ton of fun, and I hope to see a lot of y'all there. Um, this will be our seventh year. It might be six, Ooh. Um, but we'll call it seven. So that, this will be our seventh year running. Last year, we had 3,200 people show up, so it was pretty huge. We take over like the entire conference uh, center there in downtown Raleigh. It's a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> Cool. So anyway, um, uh, I'm just going to like dive right into it and show you guys essentially what it is that I ran into whenever I went to go make a Slack bot with Node.js. Um, first of all, I ran into this problem where I was just like, okay, I'm going to make it. What should I do? There are like frameworks, there are these libraries, there's like an endless amount of NPM models that you can use and install on Node.js backend to just like open up like web connections and do this and that or whatever. And then when I started digging around, I found something really cool, which is kind of a different way of interacting with a system um, uh, <clears throat> or a different type of API, really. Um, so I got kind of worried that like being really impressed by this, people would kind of like poo-poo only and be like, oh, you haven't seen that before? But I, I mean, I hadn't until now. And that is the idea of like establishing multiple persistent web sockets to watch events inside of Slack and follow and respond to those events. So um, uh, the Slack core developers team releases a, a bot called like Node Slack SDK. It's really super easy to find. Um, you should look it up. This is essentially um, uh, how the whole thing, like originally you would think that this is kind of how you like interact with the system. Um, uh, maybe you're like, your client is making a request to Slack and it's responding with something. And I mean, this is your typical like restful flow that you go through here, right? I mean, that doesn't work too well whenever you're following along the chat box. Because things are happening, events are going to be firing <laughs> off. If someone, if, if something hit your API, like your or your restful API, every single time someone posted a message, your bot would explode. Like it, it wouldn't be able to handle that. That would be ridiculous. So what Slack has done is they've established this API called RTM. Um, uh, it's a real-time messaging API, and it's extremely, extremely simple to use. Um, <clears throat> I got up and running with it pretty quickly, and I just made a little weather bot. It connects to dark sky, finds locations, posts it up in Slack. It's like really super chatty and posts a really big message, and it like annoys the crap out of my coworkers. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Um, this is what it looks like if you ever, like, when you go into the code. Like, you get your Slack bot up and running just like this. That's the code that you write right there. Like, you're done. Um, do something. Yeah, so that's that's the, <laughs> we'll just, like, hand wave that whole part. But, I mean, this is what I had to do, essentially, to get connected, my, or to connect, like, this Node.js thing, or this bot, to um, uh, Slack. So, there's a little bit of run around that you have to do to actually get the token, and obviously, I mean, that's a pretty standard thing. You can Google how to do that. Um, if you're going to get the token by hand. Um, and, I mean, this is pretty simple, but despite the simplicity of what it was to get set up, I did run into some problems. 
Um, uh, first problem that I ran into is that bots are kind of like vampires. They can't come into a channel unless you invite them. All right. So that initially was a little bit of a problem for me because I kind of wanted this certain, like I just wanted people to issue a command. Um, maybe I should have used a slash command for that. And I will like go out, I will go ahead and address and say like writing a bot to do weather, essentially to like get the weather for certain areas in Slack, like you probably shouldn't use a bot. Um, you probably should just use a slash command, but I really, I was just playing around. I wanted to specifically use the bot in the RTM API. And this is the first thing that I ran into. Like bots, they, 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 they don't just like monitor every channel in the system. They have to be invited to every single individual channel. So that's one thing that you kind of have to watch out for. And there's a big reason for that, and that is because bots see everything when they're in the channel. They see every event, every reaction, every single little thing that you do inside of Slack. My bot can see, and it can monitor, and it can log and store. Now I don't log and store anything. I only watch for whenever you issue a command, whenever you at directly to the bot, and you just give it a location, and it doesn't even store anything. It just sees that, hits an API, and can give you something. So I had to write up a privacy policy to get it on the Slack app store, and I had to say, like, it's open source, you can look at the code, I don't store anything, uh, I don't even have a database connected to it. Um, so that's nice, but I mean, that's one thing to kind of watch out for. If you ever install a bot, or something after bot level permissions to your Slack team, that bot can see anything, anything, so long as it's invited to the channel. So that's kind of the twist. The other thing is the memory usage, actually. I was a little bit surprised by this. I thought that Node, I was going to spin up like thousands of web sockets, and it was just going to be like no big deal. And I was going to run on a $10 a month DigitalOcean server, and it was going to be absolutely no problem. And then 2,000 people installed the bot, and then I had to upgrade the server. And I'm going to have to continue upgrading it as it scales out because this, these RTM connections have linear growth in terms of memory usage. So every single time you establish a connection, it's a megabyte of RAM that it actually takes up. That is a lot, in my opinion, a lot. A megabyte is like, I mean, yeah, it's one, that's a small unit, but that's a serious amount of memory. And I really, really, really quickly hit the threshold of my 512 megabyte server whenever all of a sudden it just crashed. And someone from Slack hit me up and they were like, hey, we pulled your bot down from uh, the app store because you're just getting 502s now from you all of a sudden. So they just took it down. So like, thanks a lot, Slack, but they let me know and I fixed it really quick by just upgrading the server. Um, so that's a little bit of a problem and I also have had to address that and I'll talk a little bit more about it. Um, also the other problem, and I didn't have an empty slide for this, was like how can I get people to install this thing really easily? You know, I gotta be able to get tokens, you gotta bring them in, they're gonna have to like OAuth in and all that stuff. So um, uh, Slack provides a nice little OAuth flow to make that happen, and that's like, I mean, it's this token right here, right? Like, I need to get this thing from every single team. Once I have that token though, I can do everything that it is that I want. So this is pretty much like the flow that it is that you're gonna run into if you do want to write a bot and provide it as a service to the community. It's gonna be your standard OAuth type interaction. You're going to OAuth 2 with bot level scope to Slack's HTTP API. It's gonna hand you back a token and then you can use that token to connect to any of their APIs. The RTM API, they have a, another events API, they have a web API, they have all the different ways you can interact with Slack. Um, but it also works fine with the RTM, so it's just like bam, 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 could establish that um, uh, <clears throat> RTM connection and you can start listening to events. Um, and I mean, that, again, like I can't stress enough, do you have bots installed on your Slack? There are something like 70 something different unique events that that thing can listen to, and that's like a lot of stuff. It knows when you delete a message, like it knows everything, it's crazy. Um, but anyway, that's kind of what this code essentially will start, like once you implement this flow right here, and I'm not gonna throw a code example of this up because no one needs to see like the thousandth example of um, uh, OAuth necessarily. And if you do want to see that, there are way better examples online than what I'm going to be able to give you in a slide. But let's just assume that now all of a sudden I have a bunch of tokens now stored in MongoDB, which is that is, I mean, that's what I do now. My bot is out and running on a DigitalOcean server. I'm running MongoDB, and the only thing persisted are just tokens. So what essentially I've got going on here is I just, I'm sorry, I had to use a little async call. Has anyone started messing around with that in like Node 7? Yeah. I love it, I love it. So I had to throw that into the slide just like last minute. But um, uh, I mean, th this is pretty much it. Like you're, all you're doing here is you're just like getting that, you're finding like I want every single token, I'm gonna run this loop right here, 
you know, I'm going to call RTM start for every single token that I have inside a token array that's, I know that everyone over here can see, I'm pointing at the screen. Um, but like that little snippet of code right there is essentially the same thing that I showed a few slides ago. So really nothing fancy going on here. It's just looping over an array of tokens and starting up connections. And I mean, this is the suggested way that Slack says to like run a bot as a service type of application um, uh, connected to their RTM API. And this is where you get the linear growth issue. Every single one of those connections is, um, uh, I mean, it's gonna stay open forever. So that means my, currently, I think, last time I looked at key metrics, um, my bot is currently sitting at about 130 something megabytes of RAM. No, 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 I'm sorry. It's like 2,000 something now because there's like 2,000 people that have it installed. And it just sits there doing nothing. Not until someone like makes a call. Like that memory is reserved and it stays there persistent. Like if you're gonna have persistent connections open, that means persistent resources are gonna be allocated and they stay allocated in that way. And so, like, I mean, sure, unused RAM is wasted RAM, and I, like, totally agree with that. It doesn't bother me that it's using that much RAM, but, like, if this thing is popular and 4,000 teams, 5,000 teams, 6,000 teams install it, this is just a free bot that I made in my spare time. I don't, I don't want to spend $60 a month paying for you to get, like, weather stuff. So I had to solve this problem. Um, and I'll get you a question at the end, don't worry. I'll get, I'll, I'll, I'll get you. Um, so again, that's a snippet of code we looked at, um, and we're back to this thing. So the forecast bot, right? I got to this, and after I got a lot of people installing this bot, I had to solve this problem um, uh, of this constant linear growth. And just a thousand connections, I think, whenever I first checked it, when my bot fell over, it was holding it about 80 megabytes of RAM. I didn't even configure swap on the server. So that was just like, it would just run out of memory and crash and no, would give you this really weird like error, essentially like heap. The word heap, I saw and I knew right away. <laughs> it was like, okay, great, heap, sure. It's memory, you're running out of memory, I get it. So I mean, I configured swap, bad idea. It's just gonna make your system thrash like really hard. It's gonna make it super duper slow. So you gotta upgrade, you gotta use real RAM to actually make this thing work. And I mean, money just flies out of your pocket. You know, it's um, uh, it's 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 only twenty dollars a month now, but I know it's just going to keep going bigger and bigger. And one day, I'm just going to either have to kill this free thing that I've given to a bunch of people, and I like that people are using it, or I'm going to have to come up with a creative solution. So a creative solution did kind of come along, and that is um, uh, to use Go. So I'm going to talk about Go at a JavaScript meetup a little bit. Um, I didn't actually write any Go code. Uh, what I did is I had gotten, gotten into the beginning part of installing, essentially, they call themselves like a Slack bot as a service thing, application, or whatever. Um, uh, and it's called Relax. Uh, you can find it on GitHub. I mean, it's all open source. You just install it. And it opens up a multiplex connection with like Relax running. It stores all these events in a queue on Redis, all right? It makes one single multiplex event stream and it connects that directly to Slack and it watches for all those events to queues them up. And then your app just connects to that. And this thing currently, last time I got it installed and I spun up like 4,000, no, um, yeah, 2,000 like connections. Um, uh, and I was only at about 200 megabytes of RAM. So that's really nice. So. I mean, I think uh, that's a really solid, you know, I got up and running really, really fast with Node, and that was great, and then I hit kind of like a performance wall that I kind of made up in my head a little bit really quickly, and, you know, I mean, yeah, it's, it's again, I get it, it's not that much RAM, it is just like one megabyte, but, like, I don't like linear scale problems, I just want to put something out there and it be free and it be simple, and I don't have to pay a lot of money for it, people can just use it. So Relax was really nice coming along, and it's kind of been like my first introduction to Go, and I mean, it's been a lot of fun. I've used Redis a ton of a lot of things, so I was just like so not surprised at all to see Redis show up all of a sudden. But um, uh, nonetheless, yeah, I've been having a lot of fun building this Slack bot in JavaScript and solving problems that I usually don't um, uh, get to solve at my job. So yeah, um, that's me, thanks. <laughs>